Welcome to video series number two, Constructing the Loop. Before we get started, I just want to go over um, the way I've got things set up here uh, so you don't get confused. Um, this is the redrum. You remember it from when we were designing our, um, our uh, drum sounds. And as before, I have it wired to this drum mixer here, okay? And I have the same two auxiliary sends, plus I also added this uh, dual delay. Okay, so I'm going to label these just so we know what's what. Verb, delay. Okay, now I'm just going to flip to the back of the screen so we can see the wiring. I think it'll help illustrate exactly what's happening, but it's pretty much wired as before. Um, here's the redrum, right? Every single output, every single uh, sample uh, channel there goes directly into our drum mixer, okay? And then that drum mixer comes out and gets inputted into channel one on the main mixer right here. So here's that second mixer. See that drums? Mixer two right here. Actually, let me, let me label it drum or drums. Okay, so essentially what's happening? Redrum going into here, channels 1 through 10, right? They're all already marked, channel 10, 9. And then out of there into the main mixer into channel 1. So drums, all of the drum sounds will be mixed together into drum channel 1, okay? And the main mixer also has three auxiliary sends, okay? And they're the same, just as these. And we might add some, we might, you know, change some, but for right now, this is a good starting point. So if this confused you, you can stop the video, go back, look at how the wiring is done. But I strongly recommend that when you set up your sessions, you set up, set them up the same way. Okay, so you can have complete control of your drums. Now, depending on what audio software you're using, perhaps you can't do something exactly like this. But I would try to mimic this as much as possible. Okay, and on the bottom here, just as before, here's our redrum, here's the edit mode, here's, I've got the four bar all set up, and as promised, we're doing the beat at 115 right here, okay? Now, for this module, we're going to focus strictly on the kick and snare. All right, because um, I think there's a couple tricks here I can show you that um, you can apply in your productions to give yourself a little bit more polish on um, on the way your drum sounds. Drums are very important, especially in uh, this kind of music, uh, modern music, top 40 music. You know, uh, drums are critical, critical element of uh, your production. So they got to sound right. So let's start off with by bringing in the uh, kick. Okay. There's all our samples right here, and let's bring in the kick. There it is. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, uh, since I said we're going to do like a 4-4 type of vibe here, I'm just going to go ahead and drop this to uh, quarter notes, and let's just draw everything in. Remember, I'm not using a keyboard uh, for this because I want you to see exactly what I'm doing right on the screen. Otherwise, I might, you know, I would have my keyboard with me and I could just play the notes right on it. So let's get a little closer. Control drag. You remember this feature, control drag. And let's just play it back at 115. Just a straight up 4 4 kick drum. Okay, so pretty much just as we left it, uh, sounds pretty good. Let's uh, let's just go ahead and bring in the snare. Okay, now typically you would have something like this for a four-four beat. Okay, snares on the two and the four, very standard stuff. Okay, let's take a quick listen. Okay. Um, one thing I would do right now is maybe just uh, adjust a little bit of the volume. Uh, but before I do that, let me bring this down a notch. 
before I do that, um, I'm just gonna tighten it up. Now remember, right? This is the whole. This is for the drums, and this is for the whole drum mixer on the output right here. And so what I'm doing is, I just want to kind of tighten them up. I'm just gonna give it a little. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a compression. A compression here. By the way, the mixer is the main mixer is on 80. Let me put it on 100. Okay, and remember while we're working um, down here, we uh, you know this is where my clip meter is. I don't know where yours is if you're not using Reason, but be mindful uh, that you're not uh, clipping or distorting. If you are, you got to tuck the volumes back a little bit. Okay, now watch what I'm gonna do. Um, to, to help create a, more of a swing or a groove, um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with um, shuffling your beat um, or quantizing it with a shuffle. Uh, most audio production software has this. If it doesn't, uh, you, need to, you need to get a better audio software production uh, software because it's not acceptable if you don't have a shuffle. You might not know where they're located, but chances are they're there. Uh, this is Reason's shuffle. Um, yours, you know, yours probably won't look like this if you're not using Reason, but it doesn't matter. What you're looking for is um, they have presets here. Uh, I could swing it, but um, they have presets, and I'm sure you have this. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about two particular shuffles here. Uh, there's a regroove patches. Um, I think it's here. Yeah. Now these are all different swings and shuffles, uh, different percentages of it. I wanna I wanna introduce you to two particular uh, ones that are kind of standard, industry standard, and those are the fifty seven percent shuffle, which is commonly known as the TR swing, and uh, TR stands for Teddy Riley, and Te Teddy Riley was a R and B kind of hip hop producer. Uh, he was in a band called Blackstreet. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can find it online. Uh, but yeah, he was a big time producer and he came up with swinging his drum grooves at 57. So if you have a tendency to work on hip hop more often, uh, 57 is a really nice kind of traditional swing for hip hop grooves. If you're more of a dance uh, producer, then 63 for the 4 4 stuff. Now, not a hard rule. But just uh, just good to know, good information to know. I typically like a 63% on my 4-4 stuff. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put it here. Don't worry about the specifics of how this works and reason because you might be using something else. Just remember the fact that it's a 63% shuffle. Okay, let's let's hear what that did to it. can't really tell that it did much un until we get more sounds. Okay, so I just wanted to put the groove in there and tell you about the 57% and the 63% swing. Okay, now we're going to add more of a genuine real groove type of thing. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to alternate our snares. I'll show you in a minute here. You see, now you might be saying, well, what gives? I see that there's a snare sample here, but you just moved it to channel three and there's no sample here. That's right, there isn't one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open up the same snare, okay? So right now there really should be no difference because essentially we're hitting the same snare just in different channels, let's listen. Sounds the same, right? Okay, now I'm gonna try a little trick here. The pitch, the drum pitch wheels, you remember these, right? I'm just going to give it a, an increment of minus one, and this one I might leave alone or give an increment of plus one. So let's just try plus one and see how it sounds like. Now it's very subtle, and you might not hear it because it's on top of the kicks all the time. But let me let me let me mute the kick for a second.
Again, it's very, very subtle, and I don't know if you're noticing it, but essentially what's happening is this snare drum is detuned minus one, so it's a little lower, and this one is pitched up plus one, so it's a little higher. And what this does is it creates a swinging back and forth motion, and it makes the drum beat less mechanical. The problem with sequencing drums in the digital realm is that they often sound very stiff and not very natural and don't have a groove. So these little things I'm showing you are going to help create that swing and that groove. Okay, so very subtle, but it's there. And I'll tell you what, why don't we try minus two and plus two? Okay, so the discrepancy is four now, four, four notches in uh, pitch difference. Let's see if, if it's more pronounced. Right? That, now you can really tell it's there. Now let's hear it on top of the kick. I personally think it might be a little bit too much. You want it to be really subtle. So I'm just going to back this thing off and put it back to plus one and leave this one at minus two. Let's see what happens. Actually, look, it went to minus three. I'm going to pitch it up to minus two. So this is minus two. This is plus one. It really doesn't matter which one you do first, which one you do last. But the important thing to re remember is that you, do, you don't want them to hit the same way because a real drummer will never hit the same point of a snare drum exactly the same way with the, with the exact same intensity. And that's why it's really hard to replicate a very natural sounding groove. Okay, so I think, you know, if you're really listening for it, I think you hear what I'm talking about here. You know, a little off, a little on. So I think this helps. Okay, so we got our kick, snare, kick, snare. Well, what else is there? Well, let's, let me show you a little something else here I like to do. Um, and we what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to get a little fancy here. Uh, it's not that bad, but we're going to take our snare drum. Either one of them is fine. Let's say we're going to take, here, I'll tell you what, I can't, reason is kind of limited, um, but if you have, if, if you do your stuff in, uh, uh, with wave files, with actual wave files instead of MIDI notes, this would be a lot easier for you, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm going to have to open up a sampler real quick here. Now I'm just going to, I'm doing something with a sound we've already created, okay? I'm going to take, let's, let's see our hat real quick, just curious. The hat's not going to work. So you basically take the snare. Take the snare you've already created or that you're using. I'm going to put it on right here. Let me solo this. I'm going to solo the sample, just the snare by itself. Okay, so there's our sample. And what you're going to do is you're going to reverse the sample, okay? The way we have to do it in Reason is the sampler allows you to loop it, I think, backwards. I typically would do this in Pro Tools or some other wave editor, but since we don't have that, backwards, forwards. Let's hear it. Not really working out for us here. Forward, loop. Could have swore they had a reversal thing. Let's see. Um, I knew there was a way to play this thing backwards on here somewhere. And I could have swore it was in the loop, but for some reason, let's see, backwards and forwards. Pretty nuts. Let's see. Okay, right. So you see what's happening there, right? It It, it is, for some reason, the sampler doesn't have just a, a flip where it just plays it backwards. So guess what I have to do now? And I have to do further editing. This is why sometimes it's nice to just have a wave editor handy. But since I'm showing you everything in Reason, you know, I'm gonna have to work with it. All I'm gonna do now is, since it plays the forward sample first, and then reverses it here, right? Reversed right here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten up the sample. See the sample start. There, I'm going to shorten it up until it's just the reverse. I wish I could shorten it up more, but again, I'm kind of limited here because I'm 
I'm forced to work in uh, MIDI here. Anyway, I'm going to bounce this real quick. I'm going to export loop just as we've been doing before. Okay, and I'm going to call it uh, just REV for reverse. Okay, and I'm just going to bounce this out. All right, so I bounced it out. Now, I don't even need this track anymore. So I'm just going to delete it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this reverse that we just created with this with our snare sound simply by reversing it. And I'm going to use this the start dial on here because look at how late it starts. You know, I hit it and I got to wait for it. So I'm going to shorten this up so it starts earlier. Okay, that's too early. That's getting closer. I'm going to shorten that up too. It's getting there. Now watch this. Check this out. You're going to love this. So here it is. Here's my reverse, right? All I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch my uh, grid mode here to 16ths. That should have duplicated. I'm going to switch it to 16ths. I'm just going to shorten this baby up. I'm just going to solo the snares for a second. We don't need the kick. Okay. And we need to hear the reverse too. Okay. So what do I got right now? My snares and I'm putting this reverse here. Now, pretty cool, right? Did you just hear that? Let's play that again. Pretty cool, right? Now, um, what it's basically doing is it's, it's kind of really creating a nice little swing on this snare. Now, it's a little loud. I'll give you that. So I'm just going to go down to my mixer here. That's, uh, what is that, channel four. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. I don't want it too in your face. I don't want it competing with the snare. So let's hear it again. Actually, that was channel five I just did. Here, let's scoot over to four. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, and let's hear it again. Okay, now you see I'm still hearing something. What am I hearing? I'm hearing a snare where I really shouldn't be hearing a snare. For some reason... You know, now that I think about it, I, I think that when, when I bounced that sample, unfortunately, it had looped, it had looped again, but I'm going to shorten it up. Hang on a second. I'm going to fix this. This is why a lot of times I, I like to actually see the wave file with reason you can't see what's happening behind the slice. That's too short. There we go. No, still doing it. Very strange. It's as if there's another snare playing somewhere. You see, sometimes you run into these little technical difficulties, and you know it's really it's it's beyond me to figure out where that extra sound is coming from. It's not coming from here anymore. You see, it stops. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. You see, it's, it's a lot of times, even, you know, even I get into situations where you, you really got to, you, you got to spend the time and troubleshoot to figure out, you know, what, what's not right. Okay, so... You see what it's doing, right? It's creating a nice little swing. I still think it's a, it's a little bit loud. We just want it to feel natural. We don't necessarily want it, you know, way up front. Right? You, you see how it's not as loud, but it, you know, it, it's really helping that snare. And basically all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drag and drop it on every other snare to really to really create that swing. So look at what's happening. Look at what we've done. We've we've got a straight up solid kick, right? We've changed the pitch ever so slightly on our snares. Barely noticeable, but we did notice a difference and we've accentuated that difference even more by bringing in that 
a little bit of that reverse so it just sweeps into our snare. So let's let's check it out real quick with our kick drum and see if our swing has improved any. Not bad, right? Sounding pretty nice. Okay. Um, one thing I would do is um, I would maybe just turn down the snares. Not a whole lot. Let's just go to 92 with this. So we went from 100 to 92. So we subtracted 8 decibels or what, you know, whatever units of measure they use. And let's subtract 8 from that as well, and that'll take us to 48. So we've just brought all three of these down together. Okay, I'm going to compress it a little bit more to really get it cranking. Now notice our clip here. Okay, so... Not too bad. We might, ad we might adjust some uh, EQ, some frequencies on this a little bit later. But for right now, we're just, we're just, uh, we're just getting started. We only have a kick and a, and a snare. But I, I think these two are, uh, elements are grooving pretty nice. So um, in Module 2, uh, which is coming up next, uh, we're going to bring in hi-hats and uh, incorporate that with what we have here. And then, you know, maybe then it'll make sense to maybe tweak some EQs, maybe add a little bit more verb to the snare. This is why it's always best to work uh, on the track and the sounds together. Because since we did these separately, you know, we might have to do a little bit more tweaking in, as opposed to if you would have just done one at a time. So, uh, but uh, you know, all in all, I think, uh, I think this is a very nice start. I'll see you in module two.